Welcome to Resiliency Radio, your go-to podcast for the most cutting-edge insights in integrative and functional medicine. I'm your host, Dr. Jill, and in each episode, we dive into the heart of healing, interviewing lifestyle experts, renowned world leaders in research, medical experts on a variety of topics. Today, we're going to focus on one of my very favorite topics, gut health. Many of you know I had Crohn's disease diagnosis at 26 years old, and here a little bit over 20 years later, I no longer have the diagnosis. We're going to dive into that and so many other things with my special guest today. Let me introduce him. Dane Johnson is the founder, CEO of Crohn's Colitis Lifestyle and a holistic nutritionist specializing in reversing Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. So we totally agree on that. We had so much fun talking before we got on yeah. <laughs> about all the things we're doing and what we believe uh, with IBD. Dane's story ignited through a life-threatening case of Crohn's colitis, which nearly took his life in December 2014. Since committing his life to natural healing, he has remained surgery and medication-free while eliminating IBD symptoms. To date, Dane and his passionate team of specialists and coaches have created 500 over 500 success stories for reversing IBD symptoms using his signature SHIELD, S-H-I-E-L-D program. We'll get into that today. Um, his international IBD consulting firm is one of the few organizations in the world that treat that only treat IBD and see roughly 100 plus international cases a week, um, despite any unique needs. And you and I know how complicated this can be. Oh, yeah. um, he and his team have successfully worked with um, clients despite surgery, age, medication, and past experience. I am absolutely delighted to welcome you to the show, Dane. Yes, thank you so much for having me and everyone listening. I dedicate this time to you. If you are chronically sick, feel like you're stuck, there's nothing that you can do, this episode is dedicated to you. I will deep dive. I will give you all the juice, all the squeeze today to help you get massive results. Healing is possible. Thanks for having me. You are so welcome. And again, I, I saw your email come through from your PR team and I was like, this is someone I want to talk to because we didn't know each other before <laughs> this. And even as we talked the first few minutes before we got on the recording, like we have so much in common. What I love to start with is a story because that drives everything you're doing. And I know you're full of integrity and passion about this, but tell us like where, what happened? What happened to get you to this place? Yeah. The, and it's kind of how I got here. And the first thing I'm, I'm going to tell you is wh whoever you work with, whatever you do, make sure you have trust and integrity in that first, because healing is not linear. It's difficult. But if you have that integrity of who you're working with, what you're listening to, like this podcast, you can continue to pivot and find the right way. It's not easy, but it is doable. And that's what it was for me. I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis, then Crohn's disease, then ulcerative colitis with gastritis. Nope. Back to Crohn's disease. And this is Mayo Clinic, UCLA, Cedar sinai um, you know, living in California. And so they didn't really understand what was going on. We knew I had inflammatory bowel disease. It was chronic and it become life-threatening by the time I was 26 and nearly died in the hospital. And I had my first symptoms at 19 years old, blood in the stool, urgency, cramping, diarrhea, eight to 10 bowel movements. By the time I was 26, it was 25 bloody bowel movements a day, uh, 120 pounds, 6'2", in a wheelchair, unable to walk. I was on Intivio, methotrexate. I was on 200 milligrams of infused prednisone. I had to go on chemotherapy to help ch save my life, which I'll talk about today. I was on Ambient. I was on painkillers and I was on antibiotics like Skittles for years and prednisone, cortisone steroid for uh, four years on and off, you know, 40 milligrams taper off, 40 milligrams taper off, 40 milligrams taper off. I know a lot of people can relate with that. I also failed uh, when taking mesalamine, uh, 6-MP. 6-MP gave me drug-induced hepatitis, and so my liver started failing on that medication. So uh, the point I say in that is I was not a guy who was against the grain, who was going to come out here and show all these doctors as a young kid that I knew better. I just said, Doc, give me what you need so I can go back to my life. I liked cereal. I worked at Papa John's Pizza as a teenager. I liked Subway sandwiches and Chipotle. I grew up in the middle of nowhere in Virginia. I had never heard of natural medicine. I never heard anything about organic food. I never knew anything about the microbiome, the epithelial cell lining we'll talk about today, digestion, the what drainage pathways are, how they work, the microbiome, the diversity, the underlying infections that could be there. And I spent year after year getting worse and worse and worse. When I say worse, I'm talking about I've probably lost control of my bowel movements 100 times. Gross, but I know people out there can relate. I went from 185 pounds 180 pounds to 120 pounds. And the ironic thing is I had this career when I was young uh, where I was, I moved to California, one way trip, started making it and acting, got in some commercials, was a terrible actor in a few movies, 
shot with Nautica and Tommy Hilfinger and Men's Health Magazine and Men's Fitness. I was 6% body fat, 315 pound bench. I was in the gym two hours a day, every day. So I was a dedicated young man at the same time. I'm getting diagnosed with an incurable disease I'll have for the rest of my life that's causing me to poop blood in the stool like a crime scene. So I'm supposed to be this cool guy, but I'm dealing with extreme shame. It was like I was Two-Face. You ever know the Batman movie? I was Two-Face. It was one step, put on these clothes, take pictures for this magazine. The other step, this is killing you. And um, I went through so much pain, so much shame. My family spent around 30,000 USD the first year trying to heal me naturally, and I only got worse. So, and we're not, I'm not from a wealthy family. So we were going broke. We were running out of hope. The medications were not working. By the time I was 24, 25, the doctors were bringing up surgery to remove part or all of my colon as a colectomy. That was where the predominant disease was, was in the colon. I still had some issues in the stomach. They weren't really sure about the ileum and other parts of the duodenum, which is why they kept kind of going towards ulcerative colitis, Crohn's, unsure. So, um, but I refused the surgery. So today I've had no surgeries. I have one to two bowel movements a day. My calprotectin is normal. I can eat a variety of food without fear, worry, doubt. I just got back from Hawaii last week. I have two kids who are perfectly healthy, happily married. I go to the gym five days a week. I can go, I could eat a burger and go for a run and be okay. Is that easy? No. Could I do that when I started? No. Do I advise you try it right now? No. <laughs> it takes a large amount of skill set to get there. And I'm going to deep dive on that story and that journey of how to make that possible for you, how true healing works and why I was failing for all those years. What was I missing in trying these extreme diets and trying just intermittent fasting and bone broth and making my own homemade yogurts and, and having only pureed carrots for three days? I, I tried all that stuff. And it does help a lot of people. But if you're chronic and you're sick and you're most likely listening to this podcast, you need something deeper. That's what I'm excited to do today. So um, my story is just pain to purpose. And um, it's, um, it, was one, it was the hardest thing and the worst thing that ever happened to me. But nowadays, it's the best thing that ever happened to me. Wow. Okay. That is, I think you take on no, such a great <laughs> concise story and so many details I want to dive into a couple mm -hmm. things that come to mind. First of all, um, I want to talk about, we call them in functional medicine antecedents and triggers. So you had some little clues in there that I picked up on, and I want to hear you tell our audience in just a minute, some of those things of like, when you look back, what were some of the things I don't want to tell anyone listening or you that it's our fault. Cause it's not, there's genetics. There's all mm -hmm. kinds of things that play into it. But when we look back, my story is no different. We're like, Oh, Oh, I see how that might've contributed and that might've contributed because sometimes it is actually to get to that place of healing. We have to go back and make some really hard choices. So I want to talk about that. The second thing I want to talk about um, is your will to overcome. There's clearly, um, and I want to know more about that. Let's start there because I feel like there is something inside of the people I've seen, like myself, who've overcome cancer, Crohn's and many other illnesses. There is something inside of us. Maybe we call it grit. Um, that will, that allows us to actually be like, no, I will find the answer. I know I will. I may not know it now. What was that in you? What did that look like? Did you have that from birth? No. So the first thing you have to understand is it's not your fault that this happened to you, but it is for darn sure your responsibility to fix it. Until you can get there mentally where you can forgive yourself, you can forgive God, you can give your family all around who cannot relate and cannot help you. And even a check might not be able to do it, that it's not your fault but it is your responsibility. That's why one of the biggest reasons I was failing for years, because because it wasn't my fault I got sick and I have this incurable disease, Netflix all day long, stuck in my pajamas, not getting ready for the day, not reading, mom's buying out Whole Foods, paying all this money for me to see all these doctors. And I'm just saying, okay, what do I do? I'm not learning it. I'm not aware, I'm not focused. I'm just saying, I'm just reacting. And then I'm looking at my clock, waiting for it to kick in. All right, I've been on this diet for uh, 10 days now. When's it gonna kick in? And because I was so traumatized and upset, the whole time, if I didn't get results quickly, it was, it was easily defeating me. And then I was a victim again. See, told this wouldn't work. See, told you this diet's BS. Yes. Told you these supplements, they're just trying to steal your money. Mom, dad, sister, they were all pitching in. Wow. I, no, I was a kid. I was broke. I had no money. But I'm looking at, uh, he, he ate what for 90 days and he got better? Yeah, right. Only 1% of the world can do this. I was addicted to... 2% right. dairy milk. I'm from Virginia. I'm a good old boy. I was addicted to Chipotle, Chinese food, uh, Papa John's pizza. I worked at a pizza joint from 14 to 18 years old. 
So the victim mentality is something you don't recognize yet, and you haven't decided to take responsibility for your health. This podcast, these communities, these doctors, they are consultants. They are not magic pills. They are not the answer. They are part of training you to become your own answer. You will never succeed until you are the answer. If the answer is outside of yourself, you will always live in fear and you will never actually feel safe in your body. So there's a mental and spiritual shift that must happen. I don't care if you have the perfect diet, the perfect supplements, that they find the parasites, they find the mold, they find the virus. If you don't make that shift to create the answer within, to train your spirit, I believe that eventually it'll come back and be defeating and it will then be still traumatizing and you'll live in fear, which is constantly keeping your system in a uh, sympathetic nervous state and affecting your vagal nerve. It's affecting the energy in your body. It's affecting hormone development. It's affecting digestion. No, all of that. And when we look at things like EFT, EMDR, German New Medicine, we realize that we have to shift the signal in the body, which will then shift the cellular connection. It'll shift the hormones. It'll shift the microbiome. It'll help shift the amount of enzymes that are physically being made in your stomach, your mouth, your ability to chew, your breathing, the amount of oxygen and supersaturation you're getting into your cells, eliminating hypoxia. These things matter. Energy has a massive physical response. We know it. We can prove it. You've got to learn to tap into it. So how do you take the woo-woo, the energy, and then make sense of it into a physical shift in your body? That's what I did. That was the first thing that changed my life. Healing starts in the mind. It's not your fault, but it is your responsibility. And then you have to learn how to dance with daily energy. It's a dance. Yes. You've got to look at energy like a significant other. If your mom, dad, brother, sister, significant other is saying things that are igniting you to be stressed, number one, can you interpret it different? Number two, can you give them positive energy so that their negative energy goes down? For instance, if my mom called me back when I was chronically sick mentally, she said, how you doing? I'd say, still got blood in the stool. When I healed myself mentally, I could then come to her and say, you know what, mom? My blood's 30% down. Hallelujah. I'm already healed, baby. Let's go. Let's go. I'm already healed. 30% down. I get it 30. I'll get it 50. I already know I can. I already did 30. Now my mom's energy's changed. Now she's excited. Now she's clapping instead of, oh God, the blood's still there. Yes. yes. You, how's your iron? How's your hemoglobin? Is your heart palpitations going up? What's your weight at? Do you need to go to the ER? Do you need to fly out there? So do you see there's a big shift. You need people to clap for you. You need people to be excited. You need to find a reason to, to heal. So the second thing on how you understand energy to the physical is you have to journal daily. Mm -hmm. It was the biggest thing that I did in the beginning that helped me get results. I don't know what the perfect diet is, but I can journal and get gain intuition on how I'm responding to this food because I know exactly what I ate seven days ago. Do you? So I just want to comment really quick because that's so <laughs> critical and I've never heard anyone say that because so often my job as a clinician is to help interpret, right? But I can only interpret if the patient makes that connection. And mm -hmm. typically on the first visit, the most important thing I can do is find them, help them discover some connection, whether it's a new supplement, a change in diet, a change in lifestyle, a prayer, meditation, journaling. One thing that we do, and I usually think in my mind, is like one thing where there's a shift and they start to connect their body's signals with what's good and bad for them. And then they start to discover because in time, they'll tell me what their body needs. And if I just listen, I can help guide them and like reveal it or they might already know. But I love that you're talking about that because at the core of everything I do is getting that patient in touch with the signals that their body, their body already knows how to heal, right? Your body already knew how to heal. You just had to tap into the innate wisdom. So keep going. But that journaling, I've never heard anyone say that. And so, so important. It was in the crazy thing is once I healed my mind, the answers became obvious. Look at this, four years of chronic sickness, getting worse and worse, tried every medication, told I have to okay, get- and tell us where did the shift happen to? Sorry to interrupt yeah, you. What yeah. you like, like how did it, was it slow? Was it gradual? Was it one day there's an epiphany? Four years four years to mm -hmm. shift. The moment I actually decided to heal, I started healing. Yes. You haven't decided yet because you're, the answer is still outside of yourself. If you, if I put a gun to your head and said, you better heal, something can shift inside of you. There are obvious answers you probably haven't chosen. I'm going to prove it to you right now. When I decided to heal, it became obvious to journal. 
A 10 year old can create the idea. It's an obvious answer. How are you ever gonna heal if you don't know what your symptoms were seven days ago, 10 days ago, 20 days ago, yesterday, you don't know what you ate and you're not documenting how your body's reacting at different times of the day. If you were thinking, if I said, what do you think is causing this? You're gonna tell me stress. Okay, well, what stressful events have you noticed have been correlated? If you, oh, you know, uh, re repeat it. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. <clears throat> so, when you're considering journaling, the, mo the first you have to understand the concept, the strategy of why. If you're ever going to truly heal, you want to become the answer. You don't want the answer to be outside of yourself, okay? To truly heal is to be able to respond to adversity, not eradicate it. So when someone says they've cured themselves, that means they, they can respond to something bad happening. Okay, the reason why we believe gingivitis is cured is because we know if we brush our teeth and floss and stay away from processed foods, it'll stay away. But if we continue to invite those poor habits back into our life, gingivitis will probably flare again, quote unquote. So when you look at journaling, journaling is doing three things that are divinely gifted to you to be able to keep yourself healthy and, and create what you want. So number one is intuition. When you're journaling, you're sharpening your intuition over what's happening. So many aha, moment, aha moments are going to happen when you start journaling on your food because you start to play in like what's different about this meal. An example, when I was paleo and I went to a bocce grill and had him cook at paleo, but I didn't realize he cooked the whole thing in canola oil. Uh, yeah. That little choo-choo train they run, that's all canola oil. Uh huh. Also known as rapeseed oil. Yeah. Also known as one of the most inflammatory things you can put in your gut and will cause massive urgency, cramping, pain, diarrhea, and probably an increase in blood if your gut lining is injured. So right there, I became innately aware of how I was responding to food. When I decided to heal, I started journaling that day. I walked in and I just, something snapped inside of me. I had just lost control of my bowel movements on a plane. I was, I was out in Ohio shooting some stuff and I was so tired, cold sweats. My, I was losing my life. 25, 24, 26, I'm losing some of my best years in my 20s to this disease and something snapped where I was no longer willing to be sick and I stopped just t waiting for people to tell me what to do and I took control. I took the bull by the horns and I built the plan and everything changed in that moment. And you know you haven't done that yet. You know you haven't done that yet if you haven't done things that are obvious. Like when I thought about it, I said, where do I start? I don't know what to eat. None of these supplements work. I've tried vegan. I've tried fasting. I've tried uh, pureed carrots. I've, you know, I've done all these things. Where do I start? I said, I can start by just documenting how I feel after every meal. And number two, I can decide to only eat what I cook for 40 days. Ooh, good. Just wrote on the front. I said, 40 days and 40 nights. Yeah. Like the old Josh Hartnett movie. I needed yeah. a little humor in there, right? Uh, 40 days and 40 nights. And I said, I'm only going to eat what I cook for 40 days. It's obvious. It's obvious when you decide to spiritually heal, when you decide I'm done, yeah. take the variables out that are most likely hurting you and not helping you and only implement the variables that can't hurt and can only help. It can only help, it cannot hurt to make your own food. Right. It can only help, it cannot hurt to do prayer and purpose. It can only help, it cannot hurt to go to bed at nine o'clock every night on a dot and get the TV out of your room and get rid of the blue light. It can only help and, and not hurt to meditate and get that oxygen capacity up in your body and help regulate your nervous system. It was obvious. There were so many things. When I was chronically sick mentally before, I was just reading and going, okay, what's the magic, what's the magic probiotic? Okay, probiotics are supposed to work. They don't work, right? Oh, I'm gonna take this one, BioK, -okay, VSL, I'm gonna go to all these different ones and that's gonna work. Nope, quit that, try something random over here. Quit that, try something random over here. I mean, I was buying worms, hookworms and ingesting yeah. hookworms. You know about hookworms, Dr. I Jones. do. I totally know that. <laughs> I mean, you name it. I was yeah. scouring the internet uh, 13, 15 years ago, right? And so it was another thing as I realized that when I journaled, I could combine variables to not get overwhelmed because yes. I could dance. Yes. Oh, look, I'm going to do this specific probiotic in the morning. I'm going to do this food that I'm feeling a little bit better with. I noticed I did a little bit better with a little bit of banana as a monosaccharide. I started learning about monosaccharides versus polysaccharides. When your body tells you something, you can then go to the research and then try to make sense of it. I call that food philosophy. Mm -hmm. So I, I actually built a diet by customizing all the famous diets to me. Mm -hmm. I had done David Klein's diet. I had interviewed him twice and got on the phone and asked him things back in 2011 and 12. I, Jordan Rubin's books were huge. I actually met Jordan Rubin just like two weeks ago when me and him are going to work together. I'm really excited about that. 
And then I, um, I got to meet Dr. Susan Blum, who I really liked. She was a, um, she was a functional doctor who had rheumatoid arthritis herself. So I, I know her well. Yes. You know, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. Susan. Okay. Yeah. Well, I loved her books because it was like the first functionally trained doctor talking about autoimmune disease yeah. Yeah. and teaching me about side. And like her books were like, oh, that's what a T cell reg is. And that's yeah. what those, that's cytokines and IL-6 and, you know, starting to learn about how autoimmune disease linked. And then Tony Robbins, his book on, uh, unleash the giant within mental health. Like I just started, you have, when you decide to heal within a week, I was reading two to four hours a day. I was journaling every day. I only ate what I cooked. I did prayer and purpose morning and night. I used aromatherapies morning and night. I meditated at 30 minutes to 60 minutes a day. My number one values were not to make money anymore. It was to heal. Yeah. So when I was sick, I was trying to keep my career alive scratching to keep myself. Okay. That I can get on that plane or go to that booking or meet that client. And all of a sudden it was like, no one call me. Yeah. I'm gone. I don't care. I don't need money right now. This is it. And my day. So all of that, it was obvious when the trauma went away, when the paranoia, when the fear yeah. of who am I socially, how many zeros are in the bank account and I make enough money this month. You know, what am I going to do with my life? You know, all of that fear the the pain of being chronically sick superseded that fear. Yes. Until one day I woke up and said, Healing is not my number one priority. And anything that gets in the way of that will have to be put on the side for now. Mm. That's the bottom line. And if I just mention those things and you haven't decided to do that, then you haven't really been focused because they're obvious. Yes. Yes. It's so interesting because again, wow. here I'm in clinic all day long seeing patients like what you went through. And I know that my job is to create trust first, which you mentioned, mm -hmm. and to create a safe container for them to optimally heal. But it's, I'm not doing the healing, right? I'm yeah. going to give everything in my power, mind, body, and spirit to that patient in front of me. But what I really want to do at the core is give them I often say you can borrow my faith in the beginning. If you don't have enough, let yeah. me believe in you more than you believe in yourself and let that belief carry you until you have enough of your own belief in yourself. And I see that in your story. Now, the other thing I think see in your story that I think is so profound all the time I get asked, what's your protocol for this? What's your protocol for that? Mm -hmm. Say, I don't have a protocol because every single person they have to get in touch with. Yeah, there's patterns for sure, like SCD yes. diet principles or different things that I have microbiome revision, dysbiosis. Of course, all those things play into this and every person I'm looking at. But the truth is, every single person that sits in front of me has the answers, like you said, within them, if they just help me and watch for patterns. And together, we look for patterns that make sense of getting them in that trajectory. So there is no protocol. What it is, is me helping them get in touch with their innate healing wisdom, because some people do better on a low histamine diet. Some people do better on the SCD diet. Some people do, some people will have horrible SIBO. Other people have horrible bacteria, or fungal overgrowth. Other people have Klebsiella and every one of them. And some of them have mycoplasma and another a hundred things I could talk about, right? You know this well. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And every single person I've treated with Crohn's is different. And so if I were to give them a protocol and they, they lose out on the magic of what you described, which is you learning your body so well that you become the owner's manual on your own body, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You, what you said is very important and patterns is a way of saying, I'm going to teach you to dance. I'm going to teach you, I call it shield. I'm going to help you understand. Yeah, talk about shield. Dive, dive into that as you're going. I want to hear what that yeah. actually stands for. Well, and the biggest thing, guys, everyone listening right now, I don't want this just to be a marketing spiel. I want to give you so many ahas that you're going, holy crap, I need to share this. People need to listen to this. I'm going to listen to this twice. That is more important to me than me continue to push on pushing this, this, that, and the other. I want to earn your trust and I want to uh, earn and, and show you that we're doing this in integrity. If I'm the right person to work with, Jill's going to work with, I'm telling you either one of us is going to do our very best to help you out and I'm going to do everything my power. If Shield's right for you, let's rock and roll. Let's get massive results. But let's continue to dive in into why and how and all of that. I'll mention a few things on Shield, but a few things like when someone comes in, when I'm when someone says, you know, what's the perfect protocol? What's the perfect diet? I've come up with ways of giving people exactly what they wanted without them knowing it. What they really want is they don't want to be on a diet and they want to heal. Yes. So I created food philosophy. Mm -hmm. Food philosophy is defined as the ability to look at any food at any given time and assess the risk for you personally. Good. That's it. So yeah. I can eat whatever I want, whenever I want, however I want, but I can assess the risk of food. So I understand the specific carbohydrate diet strategies, ideas. 
I understand lectins. I understand uh, paleo. I understand carnivore. I understand low FODMAP gaps. And I can look at those principles and make sense of it. The biggest mistake we're making with diets is the diet is outside of ourselves. We don't understand it. We're just saying this food is bad and this food is good. When in fact, that's completely false. If you look at low FODMAP, they don't say this food is bad and good. They say too much of this food is bad or good. And then if you look at most of the diets, most of them are going to say when you have Crohn's and colitis, polysaccharides are going to be hard. Carnivore, paleo, SCD. Okay, so we're seeing a trend with these famous diets. What the heck is a polysaccharide? Okay, it's a complex carbohydrate. It's multiple uh, levels of these mar- these carbohydrates infused into one. It's like burning coal versus burning paper. Fruit is like burning paper. Grains is like burning coal. Grains and beans are like burning coal, okay? They're hard on your body and you have poor digestion. So what I'm doing is starting to show you the dance of how healing works and what are the patterns we're looking for. And then start to break the limiting beliefs that we are given as a society that I can't eat, I have to be on a limited diet for the rest of my life. Let's break that by building food philosophy. I want you to be able to eat what you want, but you need to be smart like driving a car. Can you drive the speed limit? Can you put your seatbelt on? Are you going to swerve lanes? Are you going to drive fast in the rain? It's the same thing with food. If you're at a wedding, if you're at a party, if you're at a birthday, make sense of assessing it. I might have that cake if it's the middle of the summer, my stress is low, my gut's been good, my bowel booms have looked great. But if it's the middle of winter, I just got the flu or I got COVID and I'm stressed out and we got a newborn baby and there's only 10 hours of sunlight, I might say not today. It's this, that's an adult decision to look at the moment, but you have to be trained on it. If you're just listening to diets, you don't understand how diets work. And so that's where if, if I'm looking at you and I'm going, well, what do you like to eat? Do you like to eat meat? If you do, we'll probably play around with AIP, paleo, carnivore. If you're a vegan, I'm, vegan could be harder because you have a lot more substances that could implant defenses that could cause problems, but it can be done. I've helped get people symptom-free who are vegans or Indians plenty of times. So the first thing I want to do is I want to take these ideas and break this trauma. You have to be on a limited diet for the rest of your life. Here's what, is it a limited diet if you can eat a variety of organic food that's properly prepared? I'm talking beans, grains, salads, vegetables, fruits, meats, eggs, cow, and look at it. Say, well, Dan, can I have milk? Might not want you to have milk, but maybe raw kefir that's fermented to reduce the lactose might be a smarter move. And maybe we need to check you for uh, uh, food allergies to see how you respond. Maybe we first need to boost your digestion, fix your gut lining, get the diversity right, and eliminate that candida and parasites that are probably exasperating the sensitivity, not allergy, sensitivity to it. Yes. So you see what I just did? I just used a shield to make sense of a strategy so I can. Instead of just saying, this is bad, that's it, that's my life. Call me bubble. Well, that black and white thinking actually creates more trauma, right? So I love that you're saying that because thing, years ago we did the IgG food sensitivity test, the people with Crohn's colitis, IBS, any sort of gut dysbiosis, yep. but they light up like a Christmas tree. Yep. And what happens is uh, we would actually induce more trauma by, oh, you you can have these four foods. These are the safe foods, right? This That's horrible trauma. Mm-hmm. I am such a big advocate like you of saying, okay, this tells us there's an issue with your lining of your gut. Now, yeah. like you said too, let's get you in touch with your body so that when you drink milk and you feel horrible, you're like, is it really worth it? Probably not, but you get to decide. I'm not going to tell you. You get to get in touch with that, what, what happens. And that's where your journaling and your connection. I just love this because yes. very few people understand, and even functional MDs in my field do not understand this. Because it's only looking at science. You're taking yeah. the emotion out of it. And you're talking, there's a difference between a practitioner and a coach. Okay. If someone out there for a world's best coach, like I'm fighting for that best practitioner. Now nah, you get someone else can take that. I'm a coach. I help you look at things and make them simple in your head and attack them. So you're no longer in fear. And I help to simplify what's actually happening. That's where I have to do. I have to take the fear and the trauma and simplify it. So you go, Oh, I never thought of it that way. Oh, that seems doable. When I was told I had to be on these diets, I took, I took the book. I, I almost, I walked out of the room. I said, there's no way. <laughs> yeah. I was like, how long did I be on this diet? Forever. Right. Uh, I'm right. done. Where's the ch- check? Right. check? Right. You know? So I'm trying to look at someone who didn't have a natural medicine background, was just a kid, grew up on sad American diet and start. This is how I wish someone had come at me with it. Yeah. So if, first of all, being on a diet for the rest of your life is a sacrifice. Being on a nutrition plan that helps your gut heal temporarily is an investment. Yes. I want you to eliminate the sacrificial energy and I want you to instill investment energy. And I'm going to give you another metaphor that's really going to help nail this out. If you hurt your knee 
and then you go and do jump rope a week after hurting your knee, the knee's going to get worse. If you wait three months and do the physical therapy before doing jump rope, before going on a jog on concrete, you might be fine with that run or that jump rope, and it actually might further the healing, okay? Things like fiber and things like food diversity is like physical therapy. It's only good if your body's ready for it and you know what you're doing. If you don't, you're going to hurt yourself and it's going to cause more trauma and you're going to think, I can never eat this again. I couldn't have a sip of water without running to the bathroom, 20 bloody bathrooms a day. I have a salad four to five days a week now. I can eat beans, grains, raw foods, fruits, apple with skin, any of it. I could, if you, if I wanted to, I'll be okay. It's not good for me, but I could go handle a salad with two pizzas and chug two beers and go run six miles straight and not have to use the bathroom. And I'm going to tell you exactly how I did that. It's not because it's not bad for me. It is bad for me. If I keep it up, it will cause an inflammatory response, but my shield, my body can handle it. And this is the next step that I want to give you. You were told that there was no, there was no cure. There was no root issues for Crohn's and colitis. And the way that was communicated to you was just traumatic and it was a complete lie. Here's why. If you have IBS or IBD, I can almost guarantee that you have poor digestion. Mm -hmm. Digestion is a part of anatomy. It's not a root cause ghost hiding from you, kicking your butt. If you have IBS or IBD, there's a good chance you have poor stomach acid. You have a backed up liver. You're not creating bile production. Your pancreatic enzymes are probably low too, also connected to the nervous system issues and the stress. You have uh, most likely H. pylori uh, causing an uh, inhibition of of stomach acid, that might also be leading to small intestine bacterial overgrowth. That is not, small intestine bacterial overgrowth is not even a, a diagnosis. It's a state of anatomy. It's the it's just a state. I have too much of this bacteria growing out of whack. Okay, and those if you have H. pylori and SIBO, you're much more likely to have an overgrowth of Candida albicans. Candida is naturally occurring in the body. When we go on antibiotics, which how many of us were get up, put on a round of antibiotics at one point? Almost everyone listening, I'm guessing. That causes a disturbance in the microbiome that causes the candida to become overgrown. And the candida will grow and interfuse itself through the epithelial cell lining, especially in the colon. You'll get oral thrush, you'll have hormonal issues, you'll have urgency, diarrhea, colon to go berserk. And it's a co-infections, okay? So the first thing you have to understand is how is the body's anatomy? That it cannot be argued by doctors. So when doctors say there is no cure, just say, well, doc, Let's just talk about anatomy. What do you think the state of my gut lining is? What do you think the state of my digestion is? What do you think the state of my microbiome is? We all agree that those things exist and the quality of those is co completely and directly correlated to my symptoms, right? And no one told me when I was tra traumatized, going to Mayo Clinic, all this, no one told me I had low stomach acid. When I finally checked in a non-invasive stool analysis, no one told me I had massive amounts of H. pylori, E to the sixth. <laughs> like yeah. tons. H. pylori is a bacteria that can live in biofilms that when your stomach acid goes low, it can come out from the, the gut lining and live in the gut that can continue to cause low stomach acid, cause more ulcerations and inflammation in the upper GI. It's linked with GERD. It's linked with bloating, gas, cramping, headaches, fatigue, you name it. And when your digestion goes, you're going to be more likely to get parasites because you cannot break the parasites down in the stomach acid. Low stomach acid is going to allow parasite eggs and raw fish and raw foods and pork to be able to get through the stomach and start growing in the intestines. Okay. That's how parasites and same thing with dysbiosis. If you can't properly break down those sugars, those fats, those proteins, they're going to putrefy downstream in the small intestine, the large intestine, because they were properly broken down and you're going to get more food sensitivity. You're going to get more inflammation. You're going to get more um, leaky gut, right? Which is a breaking of the epithelial cell lining, which is going to put more pressure to thin out your, your gut, your gut associated lymphoid tissue, which is then going to make you more exasperated to have cytokine reactions because the dendritic cells and the T cells are going to be more susceptible to the foreign things in the gut because of the lack of a gut lining. So you're more likely to get T cell activation like TNF alpha, interleukin one, interleukin six that are going to react in that gut lining and be sensitive because it has undigested food, because it has uh, pathogens that never should have made there. And it's further creating a cesspool of toxins and dysbiotic microbiome that is again, further giving the immune system a reason to freak out. So I just gave you a downstream example of what might be happening that all could be linked with poor digestion because it's the anatomy. If one thing breaks in the body, everything breaks. If you have a broken toe, 
go try to run. Like that one toe will affect the entire movement. Yes. Right? We don't, things cannot be separated. We have doctors who only see the GI, only see the mind, only see the liver, and everything is synergistic. So I want to start giving you that aha moment, that excitement, that what if I just started thinking about the anatomy of the body that can't be argued. It's like, oh, this is the cure. This is the root cause. That is flary language that pisses off your doctor, okay? Just start talking. What can I do for digestion? What can I do for the gut lining? What can I do for microbiome? And you'd be surprised what you can find in a non-invasive stool analysis or an organic acid urine analysis or even a blood test, uh, like even a mold test, like a blood mold test you can check on. So that is like the basics. If you can just start thinking like that, it can feel closer to you. It can feel more possible. You can not have to worry about, oh, it's the virus. Oh, it's the parasite. Oh, it's the mold. Those are all really good, but if you, it can be overwhelming in your mind. So just start saying, Dane, what can I do just to start getting my digestion up? So I just what? want to frame what you said, because you've just done the most wonderful lecture I think I've ever heard of, of the whole. Oh, wow. Thank no, you. really, truly, that was very well done. And I want to just kind of reiterate because because everything you said was so important. And from a functional perspective, the testing does matter because you're going to look at roots. So you find a good practitioner, you find a good coach, you find a good place where you can get the stool, the organic acids, the blood tests to determine. One of the things I want to mention that's so relative to all this dysbiosis in organisms, we know with Crohn's especially that there's a lot of people with a genetic predisposition. And this genetic predisposition actually causes an abnormally aggressive response to a normal microbiome. So as you can imagine, as we have all of these pathogens going on in the Crohn's or colitis patient, those in particular compared to say you take 100 people on the street, maybe 20 of them or 10 of them get Crohn's or colitis from this dysbiosis, not everybody does. So mm -hmm. the innate immune response is more aggressive. And that's because you're dumping the toxic metabolites into the bloodstream through that leaky gut. But the most important thing you said, was upstream because every time I see dysbiosis, candida, parasites, H. pylori, my question is, are you breaking down food? Is there enough stomach acid? Do you have normal motility? Because if you don't address those, and once again, even many functional practitioners aren't thinking that way. They're like, oh, let's kill this. Boom. But it'll just come back if you don't address the upstream metabolites and the things that are happening like low stomach acid. And as you alluded to, and I want to be sure to mention is the number one cause of low stomach acid and low SIGA, which is your mucosal immunity is stress. And that goes back to how are we living in this life and this body? Do we have control? The acronym from Hans Selye for stress is nuts, novelty, unpredictability, threat to ego or threat to health and sense of control. And you alluded to all those things in your own journey of turning things around because we have no control. We're victims. What are we going to do? It's very, very traumatizing. But we say, no, we have autonomy. We have agency. Let's figure this out. That actually gives you back a sense of control, which decreases stress. I love what you said. And what you're also, the thing, if I had heard that when I was starting out, it would have overwhelmed me though. Yeah, true. Because I'm just a, I'm a kid. I don't do this. This is not what I do for a living. You're a specialist. You're a genius at this stuff, right? So I think one thing is always look at how to simplify it. And this is what, how I did it for me. At the end of the day, when I wake up, how often am I feeling good energies with how often am I feeling bad energies? Am I waking up constantly anxious, constantly worried, constantly in my head, freaking out or am i laughing and just look it's ob obvious things am i laughing am i smiling am i giving lug love am i making someone else's day better so it just became when you decide to heal it's already in your intuitive nature you already know just wake up and say how, how am i feeling and how do i walk to something that will change how i feel if you felt bad and you're feeling better 30 minutes into this podcast that's an action you took to listen, that's now changing your perspective of reality and what you can and cannot do. So you are already healing in this moment. It's the same food, it's the same body, it's the same problem, but you are already shifting the energy, which is shifting the signal inside of you. So that is important. Be aware of how I feel and don't become a victim of the feeling, become aware of it and then change it. I don't like how I feel. I'm leaving this conversation because it doesn't make me feel good. I'm gonna go hug over there. I'm gonna smile over there. I'm gonna call over here and I'm gonna spread love because it makes me feel good. And that's all that matters. You don't feel good enough. You're stuck in the books, freaking out. You're listening to podcasts, freaking out. The whole time, you can be as smart, you can be a brainiac all you want. If you were freaking out while doing it, the chance of you getting results is gonna be close to, it's gonna be a lot less and you're gonna keep abandoning 
your protocols because of the anxiety that it's not enough and you have to change, change, change. And you're going to change so many times that you're not even going to know what worked and what didn't. And you're going to be, you're going to be in a pretzel emotionally and spiritually. So that's the difference is, is, is being able to coach yourself. You have to understand what makes me balanced and feel good. And all I did as I started taking action in ways that I could register, that I could be aware that I feel better after this experience than not. Reading a book, sunshine, gardening, meditation, aromatherapies, calling my mom, calling my best friend, talking about how, how good their day is. If they ask me what my problem is, I tell them what a solution is. I got to a point where you couldn't ask, if I told you a problem, I had to tell you a solution. If I didn't have a solution, I wouldn't even mention it. Wow. I don't speak anxiety into reality. I speak possibilities. That's my, write that word down right now if you're listening. Possibilities, underline it twice, star it, highlight it. That word is the word of karmatic energy, it is the word of manifestation, it is the word of creation. The three divine, divine things God gave you that you may not be in completely using yet that you need to is the ability to create, the ability to be intuitive on what works, what doesn't for you and what you need, and the ability to manifest a new future. If you can't feel that future, it's not coming close to you yet. You have to be able to feel it. That's what breath work can do. That's what calming your mind can do. That's what listening to this podcast can do. If you feel more closer to your success after these 30 minutes, you're doing the right thing. If you feel farther apart, then you need to simplify what's going on in your mind and you need to let go of things that are not serving you because you have too much going on. And so that, what I'm telling you is just because I've been chronically sick, I spent all the money and I really did it. And I've been sick more than 99.9% .9 of the sick people I've met with IBD. I'm talking wheelchair, fighting for my life. Doctor told me I won't live through the night. My whole family sleeping on the ground, watching me, watching me uh, sick. My mom holding a steel pan under my butt so I can go to the bathroom 25 times a day, pooping my pants, 120 pounds. I was unconscious for like five days. I was in the hospital for six weeks. I was housebound for a year. And I, it took me about three months to be able to walk again. I know pain yes. and I hope you feel it on me. I told you Dr. Joe was going to bring the heat. I'm talking to you I'm right now through this microphone, through space time continuum to let you know that pain turns to purpose and you have to take that and have to realize how you're feeling and become response able for those energies, those feelings and what you're going to do. You don't necessarily just need the, some of us do need 15 supplements and all this stuff because we have so many problems, but a lot of times you need consistency, you need belief, you need a place to grow, you need community and you need consistent action. And then be able to mark that down and see it. That's all I did. I was housebound for a year. I journaled every single day. I looked at vegan. I looked at fruitarian. I looked at meat. I looked at this diet. I looked at supplements. I looked at liver support, probiotics, enemas, coffee enemas. And I just started practicing and documenting and practicing. Went back to school for natural medicine. I bring my MD professors into it. What do we, what is this? What do you think? I take them out to lunch. What can I do? What can, what's this? What's that? And it wasn't easy. It was very hard. It's the hardest thing we can do in this world is to retake our health, but it is doable. So it is a hill. It's a big hill. It's going to be difficult, but are you still going to rise? You now are aware. Are you still going to rise up and take it? So once you do that, all the things of like, what do I need to take from my liver? How do I work on my liver? How do I work on my digestion? It will all come to fruition if you are committed to putting one foot in front of the other and getting the resources you need for success. And then you understand the three things I got to do. I got to create, I got to manifest, and I got to sharpen my intuition. Okay. Iron sharpens iron. So get around iron. Okay. Yeah. And so that is, I just want to, well, I want to wrap it. This is so, so, so good. I, I don't even want to interrupt you. So I'll let you go because this is so Sorry, good. I know I can There's, go. No, yeah. it's fabulous. I, I love every word. Um, it's, I knew that there was a, a really important reason for you to come on and already you've given us so much wisdom. One thing I want to like lay down here at the end that I think is so mm -hmm. critical. Mm -hmm. People are out there and they're suffering and they're suffering more than just IBD. Although many of my clients, patients, listeners have had Crohn's and colitis, mm -hmm. but I think one of the things I've learned and I can clearly hear it in your story is mm -hmm. the suffering. I mean, you almost died and so did I. Yeah. And at those darkest, darkest moments, let's just speak to that person that right now has no hope. They're just like, I, I've tried everything because what you have just shared, and I know I can share the same, is those are the points of transformation. And I look back and my biggest sufferings where I was looking at death in the face is my greatest blessing. Can you just speak for a minute or so on that? Because I think that's the most important. What would you say to this person who's like, I don't have hope, Dane, I'm sorry. Truth is a perspective. And right now you might not feel you have hope, but what you just told me is a feeling, not a truth. And that's a perspective. And 
maybe it doesn't feel like there's any more gas in the tank to try to lift yourself up into that inspiration, into that excitement. And I think the best advice I can give you is start with peace. Focus on what you're going to let go of more so than you're going to control. The energy of control is so much harder than let go, letting go. What do you have that you would, if I told you if you lost that or you had to go through what you're going through right now, you would say, I'd rather just go through what I'm going through right now than lose that. Because when I was, I mean, I remember I was crying one time. My mom took me home and I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. I, I didn't want to live. I was like, I'm in so much pain. I felt like I was pooping glass. I couldn't walk. I couldn't eat. My mom lost her job trying to take care of me. All my family spent their money. I just, I wanted, I didn't want to do it anymore. But then as that wave of intensity came over and passed, I realized that if I had to pick and I told God that I, my, I could either lose my mom or go through this, I'm going through this. Like any day, all yeah. my friends, I would rather go through this. Like I could call, I could still call my buddy. I was still there. I still had my tongue. I had my eyes. I had my experience. I had my mind. My grandpa had dementia. He didn't know who I was anymore. Yes. Truth is not truth. It's a perspective. So if you, like, I have a lot of fire in me because it was so much pain that I rose like a phoenix out of the ashes. You have to decide that you're not done and you're not going to let this overwhelm you. And then you have to let go of things that keep overwhelming you on a day-to-day -day basis. Even if your symptoms aren't perfect, can you, can you find a reason to smile every day? Can you let go of things that keep overwhelming you? What's going on with the job, the family, the relationship? You've got to make peace. I was so angry with my father. I, I, I had to go call my dad at 24 and say, I love you. I messed up in this way. I want you in my life because I couldn't handle being at odds with him fighting for my life. I, I knew it. And that's where prayer came in. Why aren't you, if you know stress is a problem, why aren't you praying to God on your knees? I don't care who's watching. Get on your knees. I'll get on my knees right now. I don't care. See that fire? You've got to get that fire and this will end up becoming your superpower. You know it. To heal yourself and to deal with something that is not so perfect, not so obvious that no one can do for you is, is like, is how you become a superhuman. So find whatever's going to ignite that fire. Let go of what keeps overwhelming you and just make it simple. If you're that broken, start your day with meditation. Start with Deepak Chopra. Start with a book. Start with a walk. Start with sunshine. God gave us everything here to balance our souls. Take your shoes off, put your feet in the ground, put your hands in the dirt, look into the sun, breathe, and then start with gratitude. Yes. You've got to feel positive energies. If I just looked down and I said, okay, how much anxiety did you feel today? How much pain did you feel today? How much worry did you feel today? I bet right now you would 90% of it would be negative energies, but you are allowing that. Mm -hmm. I know you're sick. I know you're in pain. I know it doesn't feel good, but you can still hug, smile, laugh, be grateful and choose. When that happens, the fog will clear. The fog will clear and answers. The next step will be right in front of you. I couldn't walk, but it was obvious at that point that I needed to journal. I, I couldn't, I was having 15 bloody bowel moves a day, but it was obvious I needed to meditate. It was obvious I only need to eat, eat what I cook. I was obvious I needed to listen to Bob Marley, I wanna love you, as I was eating that food. It was obvious that I needed to take time, calm down my breath, and chew my actual food instead of swallow it whole. There's, and I know that's not your perfect answer, but your answer is a thousand steps away. Focus on step one, and you will soon, in cons if you are not overwhelmed and you are consistent, you will be get to step 50, step 100, step 500. It will change the rest of your life, and you will be of power to help anyone around you because of what you went through. And then it will become the best thing that ever happened to you. Dane, that is beautiful. I, I knew that we'd have this great interview and you have touched me deeply because it's so rare that people really get it. And you're clearly living in your purpose and the mm -hmm. pain has driven your purpose and this way of blessing the world in such a great way. Thank you for using your story, your suffering to change the lives of so many. I know people are dying to know where they can find you. <laughs> can you give us that information? Yeah. So you guys, if you want to learn more about us, we do offer a complimentary 60-minute session with one of our IBD support specialists. Everyone on our team has IBD for the people, by the people. So our doctors, our professors, our coaches, we all have this. We've all been in your shoes. We know what this is like. So whoever you're going to talk to, you're going to talk to someone who has this disease. Oh, what I would have done for that. What I would have done for that. 
that's really all I built here. It just, I built what I needed 10 years ago, 12 years ago. And uh, we want to operate out of trust and integrity. If, if I haven't earned that yet, don't, don't, don't reach out yet. Take your time, research us, look at other programs, do everything out there. Um, but I've tried to operate in the most integrity as possible. Uh, everyone in our program, in SHIELD program, gets a private coach. Uh, we ship supplements international. We work with people in Hong Kong, India, Netherlands, all over Europe. We have a huge European community. Uh, we've worked with kids. We've worked pregnancy, post-surgery. People have been diagnosed for 45 years. We have more testimonies reversing Crohn's class than any, than any clinic, hospital, doctor on the planet, as far as I can see. Um, and so that's an opinion, but I haven't seen anywhere close. Um, but that's it. It's like, I don't, I don't want this to be an infomercial. I want to earn your trust and earn your integrity and everything will work after that. Uh, if we can help you, we're going to do everything in our power to get massive results. And we've got, our, our, we have a thousand plus members in our community who come and meet weekly on our trainings and, and talk and everyone has their own custom answer. That's also really big. I would say is build your custom answer, yeah. get away from the generic, learn the generic and cherry pick. Mm. And, um, and I think Dr. Jill, obviously what she's doing at her clinic and what she can do for you is massive. I can probably learn a thing or two. Um, and so I, I, I get the feeling, me and her just met, but I get the feeling she's got massive integrity, massive trust. And if you decide to put your faith in her, I don't. I think you're going to get massive results as well. Thank you. So you guys can find Crohn's Colitis Lifestyle.com. If you're driving, don't worry. In the show notes, wherever you listen, you will find all of his links and bio and information. So we'll make sure that is very easy for you to find more about um, Dane and his work. Um, thank you guys for tuning into another episode. This has been one of my favorites, Dane. I'm, I'm really grateful for you sharing your heart and your integrity and your knowledge. And I can't wait to see this reach many, many lives. Thanks again. Thanks again.